Yeah, I'm going to talk about atomic humanism, which is going back in time a little bit to when nuclear power was invented in the 1950s, and talk about some of the idealism and altruism that underlay that support for nuclear. And then what happened to it? Why did nuclear become so feared by so many people? Why is it banned in Australia? Why is it being you know, under attack in the United States? And so I'm going to look at some of those historical roots and talk about why I think we need to um, rethink the technology because I think it's a very special technology. It has a very small environmental footprint. It has the smallest environmental footprint of any source of energy. And it's also absolutely essential if we're going to deal with climate change. So I'm going to talk about those things. Every country needs to scale up nuclear to deal with climate change. Um, we can get some emissions reductions by moving from coal to natural gas, which has about half of the emissions of coal. But if we're going to get to zero emissions, you have to have nuclear. And for a long time, I thought that it would be enough to have solar and wind. I was a big advocate of solar and wind, helped to get a big investment in solar and wind by President Obama. But as we understood more about how electricity works and some of the limitations of solar and wind, we realized that we needed something that was reliable, that would run 24 hours a day, seven days a week. And I also became more concerned about some of the land use impacts of solar and wind alone. They actually require a lot of land, which is a disadvantage for countries that have a high population density, but it's also a disadvantage for countries like Australia and states like my own, California, just because they have big land use impacts, you do end up losing biodiversity when you scale up big solar farms. So I think for that reason, if we're gonna deal with climate change in this century, we're gonna to need to have a pretty significant increase in nuclear. This is the issue that, I mean, I think the, the issue of safety is one of the worst understood issues of all of the issues. And I think that it's important to understand how energy generally relates to safety. So as humans go from wood to coal to natural gas to uranium, we actually um, have all sorts of benefits in terms of safety. In fact, each of those transitions moves us to a safer energy source. So people don't think of it with wood and dung, but actually they're very toxic smoke. About seven million people die every year from air pollution alone, either from wood and dung or coal and air pollution. Natural gas, you have very significant um, number of deaths from explosions, um, pretty frequent actually. And uranium, um, despite all the fears from the meltdowns, the truth is that hardly anybody is negatively affected by them. Um, Chernobyl was the worst accident we had. Fewer than 200 people will die over a 50 or 100 year period after the accident. Nobody will die from radiation from Fukushima, according to the United Nations. So nuclear actually turns out to be the safest way to produce power. And as a consequence, nuclear ends up saving lives because it prevents premature deaths from air pollution, from fossil fuels. It also prevents the kind of explosions coal mine collapses, all of the problems that we see with fossil fuels. I mean, nuclear, the funny thing is, so I think in contrast to some of the other things we've heard about mining, nuclear um, is pretty popular with the people that live near the plants. Um, and some of that's just a function of like, if you're, if you're really scared of a nuclear plant, then you're probably not going to live near one. Um, but also there is like money that goes to schools and stuff like that from nuclear plants. The biggest fears of nuclear are in the broader society. So it's just people that don't live near the plants that are just scared to have them don't want to have them. So I think that what needs to happen is that people just need to know the truth. I mean, I don't think there's anything fancy that needs to be done. Um, I just think people don't know anything about nuclear. Um, what everybody knows about nuclear is that's really powerful. And that's why it's so important for climate change, because solar and wind are just too weak of energies to power society and solve climate. Um, but I think that you know, people have these, I mean, most people think that something like 100,000 people died from each of these bad accidents. And when you, when they find out that in fact, nobody died of Fukushima or a couple hundred people died from Chernobyl, people are shocked. And I think that's when you start to kind of get people coming around to thinking, I mean, the irony is, I think the more we talk about the accidents on nuclear, on the one hand, it's sort of, the more you talk about the accidents, people get scared. On the other hand, the more people learn about the accidents, like it was for me, the more you kind of go, oh, it's not what I thought it was. Well, I, took, I accepted the invitation to come to Australia. I, whenever I get an invitation to come, I like to come because Australia is one of the most paranoid countries around <laughs> nuclear. So, <laughs> and it's also, you know, one has one of the dirtiest electric grids. I mean, Australia's doing a lot of renewables right now, but they're really not reducing emissions significantly. And so Australia's like a big, rich country that should be doing a lot of nuclear. And it just has this particular fear that is related to sort of some historical reasons that that are, are sort of interesting on their own. But I always like to come and give support to my pro-nuclear friends here and to say, look, you guys have so much uranium. 
you know, you should be really using in your nuclear plants. I'd love to see Australia keep your coal in the ground. I think that's where coal belongs, in the ground. Um, you know, there's a role for natural gas to transition away from fossil fuels and like, like coal, which is much dirtier. But I think that long term, Australia needs to get comfortable with nuclear. And that just starts with kind of coming here and talking to folks and, you know, sharing some of the facts about it.